Nice! Hello everyone, in this Canva tutorial I will demonstrate how to create a children's storybook using Canva and JetGPT. The storybook I'm making is this one and I will show you step by step how to create it yourself and along the way in this video I will provide you with tips to help you better understand how to write and create a good storybook. Before you start writing a script for your storybook, there are several points you need to consider. You need to ask yourself a few questions. Who are you writing for? Are you talking it to preschoolers, elementary school kids or perhaps teenagers? You need to understand your audience. Also their age group and their interests will help to shape you to write a good story. I will create a storybook for children in elementary school. So writing a good storybook is also a story that captivates kids and that they can relate to. So you need to think of a central theme or use a character in your story that feels real for kids. The writing style is so important. It should be engaging and making kids want to keep reading or listening. This is especially important if teachers might use your book in schools. It affects how teachers will read the book to kids. The best part is to create a book with your own imagination. These are books that are original and JetGPT can help you with create a better story script or prompt if you're using your own imagination. Alright, with that being said, let me explain how I use JetGPT to improve my story script. This is the first prompt that I asked to JetGPT. Write for me a short story for kids to learn something useful. Then JetGPT generates a story for me based on this prompt. And after reading, I'm mm, realizing it's not the best fit. So I use my own imagination again to refine a story. Used five farm animals, a donkey, a goat, the yellow duck, a pony and a pig. Can you maybe make a short story about these five animals and his friends? Then JetGPT generates a new story for me, but I still feel it could be better. So I decide to focus on just three animals and give them names like Sunny the Duck, Polly the Pony and Ellie the Donkey. I am not entirely sure if this is good, but I consistently provide feedback to ChatGPT because I believe it helps improve the story. And this is the final prompt that I've used. Can you create a story about the five animals I mentioned earlier, where the pig wants to be Superman and learns to fly? ChatGPT came up with three names that I provided earlier in the prompts and added two names of its own. Now I will show you step by step how you can improve the story and make it much better. Just to let you know, I'm not a native English speaker, so you might notice my accent. I am currently learning English to improve my skills. And this is the prompt that I'm using for to create my storybook. I think the prompt I'm using right now may not be the best English, so do always your own research or improve the prompt if you're a proficient in English. That's uh, why there might be some mistakes in what you're going to read right now. So if English is not your first language and you plan to create and sell a storybook, please contact someone to check your work for spelling and ensure it's truly good English. Because you don't want to sell something and receive a lot of reviews saying it's not good English or something like that. Okay, so as you can see, not everything is easy for a kid to understand. You really need to think like a kid. Let me show you a few steps on how you can do this too. First, I copy the entire prompt and open it in pages. What you're seeing now is a document with the prompt that ChatGPT gave me. I'm using the pages program on my laptop. If you don't have pages, you can use other software like Google Docs. It's free to use. I will start with the names. I've made everything bold that I changed. It's important to think like a kid, so I came up with names that are easy for a child to pronounce. And why did I use Superman? Well, most kids between the ages of 4 and 8 like to play with superhero toys. If you don't have children or you're not a parent or a teacher and you don't know how to find a subject for your book, you need to do some research online for your target audience. So you can check out toy stores to see if your audience would like it, or you can filter things on websites, or you are going to Google for children books, what is popular right now, or think what you liked as a kid. Writing a good storybook is also a story that captivates kids and that they can relate to. So it needs to have a central theme and the characters should feel real. When I was a kid and also when I worked as a babysitter, I really liked these books. Because all of these books had a character and a fun story. 
If you don't know these books, you need to check them out. Okay, head over to Canva. You can search for storybook designs, but I'm using a blank canvas and these are the dimensions of it. You can probably guess already what my theme is because of my script. My central theme involves farm animals and friendship. I chose this theme because I know that children learn about various topics at school each month, such as farm animals or friendship. Therefore, you should ask yourself the question, where else might this book be read? Besides being read at home by a parent, can a teacher read this book to a class? I will first explain how I made the cover of the book. When I create a story, I think in pictures, so I search for watercolor illustrations. I find that fitting in the theme of my book, and it's also something what you see a lot in children's books. So you should also decide or think what kind of illustrations you want in your book. Of course, I already found some pictures that I want to use, so I saved them in my book folder. You can create this folder yourself by saving the pictures into a folder and then you can find this folder under projects. And by the way, if you use this folder a lot, it will appear in a toolbar here. I drag this picture onto my blank canvas and then I right click on my mouse A menu will appear and I choose set image as background. If you double click on the background, you can adjust the photo. Okay, and now we began by adding the title to my design. I copied the self-created title and then I pressed the letter T on my keyboard. And then a text box appears. And I paste the title in it. I remove Finny and Friends because it will be placed elsewhere on the page. And then I select the font which is called Chapbook. And then I choose Effects and then I choose Curve. I position the title a little bit in the middle. And I don't know if you know this, but if you use Shift plus R on your keyboard, then the rulers will display and sometimes it's quite handy to use these rulers. And then I press the letter T on my keyboard again and a new text box appears. I paste the remaining part of the title in it and select the same font and adjust the font size to this setting. I have already decided which animal I want for the book cover, which is Finny the Super Pig. Let me show you how I created this because it wasn't easy. You can't find this image in the elements search bar. You need to create it yourself. I'm using the Magic Media app for this, which you can find under apps. And then you need to create it a prompt. I'm using this sentence and then Canva will generate a photo for you. But you need to select the style you want. I chose watercolor and square and then you need to wait and then the app will present you with four photos to choose from. You select the one you like the best. If you're still not satisfied like me, you can click on the three dots and then choose generate more like this. Canva's Magic Media app will then create more images for you to choose from. You keep doing this until you find the perfect image. I wanted a pig that looked like child friendly with the letter S on its belly. And I found the perfect picture by clicking generate more like this at least five times. By the way, if you generate a photo in the Magic Media app, it will automatically appear in your uploads. So as you can see here, you see a lot of uploads. What I do is select the pic that I want for the cover of my book, and then you will see the white background. You can easily remove that by clicking on BG Remover, and then the background will disappear. After that, I select the BG Remover again, and then I choose Erase, and I remove the grass. And then you will have the cover of your book. Okay, so as you can see now, I've already made some pages. And now I will tell you how you can make these pages too. For the intro page, I created this page and most books include these pages. So I thought I'd make one for my book as well. And all the elements you see on my page were found in the search bar of Canva or created using the Magic Media app. If you also want illustrations like these, you should search for things like duck and then watercolor duck. Now I will show you how I created the other animals. I will start with Sunny the Duck. I searched for watercolor duck in the element search bar and I found a graphic image that I liked, so I select the image. Earlier in my story, I mentioned to ChatGPT that I want a yellow duck. If you can't find a yellow duck in the element search bar, you can easily create them yourself. All you need to do is to edit the graphic image or the photo. As you can see on the screen, I did that with Sunny the Duck. I created Greater the Goat the same way how I created Finny the Super Pig. I used again the Magic Media app, but this character was very hard to create. I used this prompt, but it took me a while to create this character. So yeah, the only thing I don't like about the Magic Media feature from Canva is that if you want to create something specific, like if you want the same image Finny 
uh, as the cover of my book, without cape, then you get a whole other graphic images. You don't get the same pic. I hope you understand. If you don't like that and not get the same graphic images, then I recommend consulting someone who make illustrations. You might pay more, but you get much better work than these images. And these are Polly the Pony and Eddie the Donkey. You can use the same images, but you can also make the image a little bit different by making Polly switching from, uh, yeah, from sides. And now I'll show you how I added the shadows to it. And yeah, you have to watch the screen for this. But I found these images in the Elements search bar. I select Edit the Donkey and then I clicked on Edit Photo. After that, I clicked on Shadows, what you can find under Effects, and use these settings. I did the same with Polly the Pony, and you need to check for yourself what you like the most. Okay, I showed you all the character animals, and now I'll explain why I used some other images and also how I created the text. I will read one page for you, and hopefully you understand what I mean. If you have any questions, please ask in the comment section under this video. In a cozy corner of the bustling farm, five friends lived happily. Vinnie the pig, Eddie the donkey, Greta the goat, and Sunny the duck, and Polly the pony. Each had their own special spark, but Vinnie was known for his big dreams. Why did I use these names? Well, they are very easy for children to pronounce, and also for me as a teacher. And why did I use a different word than own unique charm? Well, it's because it's a difficult phrase to explain to children what it means. So instead, I use special spark. Okay, I'm not entirely sure how to explain this well, but you should use plain English for children. And a nuke charm isn't that. If you're a judge and you watch this video, you moet denken in Jip and taal. There is also another aspect I don't like about using the Magic Media app. You see here the first short text that you saw on pages and you heard me reading it. Ideally, I would use the same characters, but unfortunately Canva doesn't have the function to generate a prompt with this photo. And then you hope to get a photo that resembles your main character. So the following pages, I use animals that better convey the page message. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I really want to create a pig character with a letter S on his belly. So meet the main character of this book, Finny the Super Pig. This photo gives you a glimpse of Finny the Super Pig. The head might not be a perfect match, but the body fits well, as you can see. I also explained in this video that I think in pictures. Pictures that are easily understandable for kids. The text you see here in a coastal corner of the bustling farm, five friends lived happily, relates to this graphic image. You don't have to fill a whole page with a lot of images. You can create a simple page like this one which already clearly conveys the message. It is mentioned a farm, and these images relate to the other images in the book. Most books, when you open them, feature one big spread. In Canva, I can't show you a book, so just imagine that this page is laid out here. So when you see this page and read Five Friends Lived Happily, you can easily explain to the kids that these are the five farm animals, and then show them, them the pictures so you can count them. One, two, three, four, five. There is a reason I arranged these photos in this way. It helps make the story more understandable for kids. In this photo, you see your main characters, Vinnie the Pig, Eddie the Donkey, Sunny the Duck, Greta the Goat, and Polly the Pony. Each of these characters is a bit different from what you usually see on a farm. For instance, only the pig Vinny looks a bit more like a real pig. Polly the pony is special because of her beak and hair, which aren't typical for a pony. Created a goat wears a pearl necklace and you wouldn't see a real goat wearing that in real life. And Sunny the duck is yellow, inspired by the name Sunny, which makes you think of sun. And this helps her name be easy to remember and helps explain her yeah, unusual color. When you're creating a storybook, it's important to think simply, but also deeply about your graphic images so they can yeah, carry more meaning. I hope that someone understands uh, how I think and how I create things. 
As I scroll further, you find a page where it reads, but Finny was known for his big dreams. I use the same image of Finny for the third time here. Sometimes you can reuse graphic images in a book, but you might need to change the photo a bit to keep it interesting for kids. Kids often know the small that dies quickly. For the phrase known for his big dreams, I created an image of Finny dreaming. I take each piece of text from the story and design a full page spread around it for the book. Alright, this is a storybook that I created. It's not perfect and I could make some pages clearer with more illustrations. But I hope it helps you understand how to make your own storybook, how to think and helps you come up with creative ideas. If you want to print your storybook, this is what you need to do. Click on share in the top right corner, select download and ensure that the setting is on PDF print. If you only want to use it online on your computer, then you can also choose PDF standard. If you are going to print your storybook, make sure to click on CMYK because CMYK is better for printing. Note that this option is only available with Canva Pro accounts. You can choose additional options like uh, crop marks, flattened PDF and include notes. And yeah, you need to decide for yourself what you need. If you don't need any of these options, simply skip them and click on download and then the PDF file will be saved to your computer's download folder. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below this video and I do my best to assist you. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to give this video a like and consider subscribing.